Good evening, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Simply Unprofessional. I'm your host for this evening, Rob. Uh, and today with me, I have Apple. Hi. And Ryan. Hi, I'm not Rob. And Lex. Hi. Uh, so Wubby's not feeling well today, so we are recording this. Uh, but we're kind of uh, doing an impromptu. We've come up with a topic. Uh, we're going to talk about homebrewed D&D items and... We're looking for things that are way OP. Uh, so that's what we're going to talk about. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or interesting or funny. Basically anything. You know us. Uh, so yeah. Uh, what has everybody been up to this week to start with? Anything well, interesting? Um, interesting? Uh, you know, just being alive, I guess a tornado within 10 miles of me today oh th thank you for the the nightmare i'm sorry <laughs> my life's just a medical drama right now el soap opera <laughs> yeti's here too All right, medically gasps in spanish <laughs> <laughs> how about you rob anything anything new and interesting in your life uh, not really. I went to the, the booth here, here for the first time since I moved up here. Nice. Uh, we went to see the doc new Doctor Strange movie, which we I'm sure we're going to talk about at some point, but it was pretty good. You told the viewers about the porcupine incident. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, but that was actually a couple weeks ago, but yeah. Matilda <laughs> has a porcupine friend. Tried to, uh, I let her out and she was acting like she was looking for like a mouse, like she was doing the really fast scurrying around. And I'm like, what is wrong with you? And she ran the wrong direction. So I looked over where she ran and I was like, there's nothing. And then I turned back and I see a porcupine lumbering towards us from the shed. And she's like, ooh, friend. And then she runs oh, over man. and starts sniffing its butt and then realizes its butt is covered in sharp stuff. So then she goes to its face and starts licking its face. And <laughs> during that time, I managed to get a hold of her. Uh, tie out and yank her back in the house <laughs> as the porcupine turned and ran for its life. <laughs> oh no. Oh. Her self preservation instincts really aren't there <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> nope. She was all like, oh, this butt is pointy. I'm going to go to the other end. <laughs> Which is not pointy, but she still was like, hey, this thing's covered in spikes. Maybe I should get away from it. Nah. <laughs> nah. <laughs> spikes of love. Spikes of love. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> I also, I did not realize porcupines were so large. I thought they were smaller than they are. <laughs> they I was are like, big. what the fuck? <laughs> big boys. They hey, are they massive. Are, they're chonkers. Big bahonka donkers. <sighs> so, does it, what did everyone bring to the table? You don't have to say what it is, but like, did you bring a race to the table? Did you bring a subclass? Did you bring an item? Did you bring more than one thing? Uh, I brought spells, which are technically not exactly homebrew, but I will explain when it's my turn. <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, I have a subclass that I made a couple days ago. Awesome. I have a druid circle that I am currently oh. playing oh, with. Yeah. Fuck yeah. I also brought a subclass to the table. Um, I do have two items pulled up, depending on if this goes really fast, I figured. They're backup things to talk about. <laughs> Yeah, I have two backups as well. If we, if we I have a them. backup item. It's Why a... are you guys so prepared? Uh, I was looking <laughs> around at stuff and I was like, oh, this would be cool to talk about. This would be cool to talk about. It was it was the it was the it was like um the overwhelming choice, but instead of 
being paralyzed by too much choice. I was like, ooh, this one and this one and this one and this one. <laughs> wants to go first oh that's the do we want to roll a d4 sure somebody roll it uh what is everybody we'll go the the chat order so apple's right alphabetically ryan is three and all right all right hold on here we go i don't ever roll these dice let's see (laughs) this is the time (laughs) i find a non-misshapen d4 uh okay here we go Uh, it's a two. That's I'm me. First. Wow. All right. So, uh, uh, I mean, this might be a little bit of a spoiler for everybody, but Webby and I have been looking into epic levels. Uh, so, uh, just in case we ever get that far. <laughs> so, Wait, I was that looking. Like that's like, like beyond point. 20. Yeah. <gasps> okay. <laughs> uh, so, I was looking up epic spells because with mr and whatever you can't go beyond 20 so they they had an official 3.5 edition had an official like not quite above like kind of above nine but not level 10 like an in-between kind of eh, that if you use too much it might piss off mistra but you still could technically cast them so i was looking at them to see like how they could be adapted to 5e some of them though <laughs> like oh my god are you kidding me? It's like, I don't know if 3.5 is just way, like, as you get higher, you're just way more powerful than you are in 5e, but, like, these spells would blow anything out of the water in 5e. So the the one that's, because in this, you had to develop the spell, which meaning you have to, like, create it and learn it, and, like, there's a bunch of stuff that you have to do in order to learn them. The easiest one to learn uh, is called uh, uh, Peripity. Uh, so what? Oh. And this, so that's the it's supposed to be the easiest one to learn. It's not supposed to be too overpowered, as because it's supposed to be basically the next level spell after nine, like a nine point one kind of spell. Uh, so this is what it does. Uh, it costs. It takes one minute to cast. Uh, it's personal. You target yourself with it. Ranged attacks against the target. Uh, against the target character rebound on the original attacker. Any time during its duration, five attacks are automatically reflected back on the original attacker. The character decides which attacks before the damage is rolled. The reflected attacks rebounds on the attacker using the same attack roll. Once five attacks are so reflected, the spell ends. So basically, it's like a reflect spell that for five times that you can prepare before battle and just lasts all day. Or 12 hours is the, the duration. Yeah. So, like, you can reflect any five attacks against you back at the attackers. And you get to right, pick. But, but you can't always guarantee that they're going to hit. And it is, like, ninth level already has, like, you got freaking Wish up there in ninth level. Seem horribly unreasonable, considering you're probably level 21. Like, you're fighting some insane shit. True. I mean, but you get to pick, too. It's not like, so if they True. rolled, like, a four and missed you, you're not like, I'm going to reflect that. You would, re- like, if you got a 26 against you, you'd be like, yeah, I'm going to reflect that one. Yeah, you get to <laughs> pick after they hit. That's... Yeah, you can but pick after they hit before just... the damage is rolled. But that's what's broken about it, is that you get to pick <laughs> after you know that it hit. Yeah. Yeah, that's spicy. Uh, but that's the that's the weakest one. Let me. The there's weakest. that's the weakest. Yes, that's the weakest one. I just picked through a couple random ones. There's one called Animus Blizzard, uh, which right. is a range of 300 feet, a 20 foot radius sphere. Uh, when this spell is cast, enemies within range are dealt 30 d6 points of cold damage. However, up to five victims that perish as a result of this blast are instantly it's transformed assuming. into whites. <laughs> These oh five God. whites serve the character indefinitely. The character yeah. cannot exceed the normal limit for controlling undead, though through use of the spell. But other means that allow the character to exceed the normal limit for control undead work just well. <laughs> oh, let's just see what what that damage would look That's like. That's actually interesting because I don't think that there is a limit now in five e. <laughs> uh, because okay, Try. so animate dead. I think you can make up to four, and then later on with Create Undead, I think it's up to six. 
But that's just with those spells that you're not concentrating. Yeah, like on. I said, these were 3.5, so they yeah. I'm sure they have some mechanics that so don't So with work that anymore, spell, but... since there is not a limit anymore, you could gain five permanent whites per battle forever. Yeah. What well, what was the roll? Was it 30d6? 30d6, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh with a bunch of ones, more ones than sixes, I got a 102. <laughs> that could like, oh my god. Average would be average would be 91. Okay, so. still. Is, is, I'm looking at our my level 14 character with their maximum health is 130. If they had already taken a couple hits, yep. they would already be like there, there is, there's no yeah. saving throw to being a white. It's as soon as you hit zero, it's as not killed outright. Uh, yeah. So failed enemies that perish. So I'm assuming you'd have to die, die, not just okay, be okay. unconscious. But imagine using this on like a village if you were evil. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, five free. Whites. I mean, a lot of like if you were fighting a bunch of grunts, for example, that were just you know fodder before the the BBEG, the grunts don't get death saves. They'd be dead. Yeah, yeah that's true. Yeah. And they get upgraded because whites are not low level care oh, low level enemies. I don't know, Rob. You need to hold on to that one. <laughs> uh, I mean, I'm going to look at all of them and see if they can be like toned down a little bit to fit better. But I think my necromancer uh, needs some animus blizzard. Uh, there's one <laughs> called Hellball. Oh, 300 oh. foot range, 40 foot radius sphere, so 80 feet across. Okay. A Hellball deals 10d6 points of acid damage, 10d6 points of fire damage, 10d6 oh. points of electrical damage, and 10d6 points, points of thunder damage to all creatures within this area. <gasps> Unattended objects are oh. also take the damage. The caster takes 10d6 points of damage upon casting. Okay, uh, okay. there's like a drawback to it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you also lose 200 XP, apparently, in this oh, version. Oh, jeez. So... <laughs> Obviously, coming to 5th edition, that would need a saving throw, because that's just how things work now. Yeah. Um, but, I don't know, that's a fair cost. Yeah, plus, yeah, you get the- it has cons to it, and I'd still, like, these, again, these are spells when you are 21st level minimum. So it's yeah. like, you have- you could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Balagos, and it would take a little bit still, but you'd be, like, you wouldn't be afraid, you'd be like, I'm level 21. I'm gonna fucking go fight a dragon. 46 is pretty good if you do 10d6 to yourself. Yeah, plus, technically, you can still have a minimum of only, like, 40 damage. <laughs> like, or whatever the math is. Uh, there is one called Let Go of Me. <laughs> the, ca the caster deals 20d6 points of force damage to a creature grappling him or her. <laughs> If it is a spell or force that is uh, grappling the character, it is automatically destroyed. <laughs> no, I I wish there was a lower level spell like that because sometimes when you have to use a whole like think about the amount of times you've sat in a grapple because yeah. you knew it'd be better to do damage than to waste a strength save or something like well, that. There is a spell for that. Fireball. Misty step. Misty step. Okay, but it doesn't do damage. Bonus, I like Thunderstep better. <laughs> yeah, that too. Uh, but, okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, one last one. I'm going to read this because there's like a whole bunch. But this one was... <laughs> this one's called Dragon Strike. It is a 10-minute ritual, but... This spell summons 10 adult red dragons. What? They appear where the Fuck. character designates and act immediately. They attack the character's opponents to the best of their abilities. On the first round, they all prefer to simultaneously breathe fire on the enemy if possible. <laughs> the character can direct the dragons to attack, uh, to not attack, to attack particular enemies, or to perform other actions that are possible for a dragon to uh, And it's all red dragons. <laughs> It'd be, it'd be like badass enough if it was like two adult red dragons. Yeah. It, it, no it, lasts, it lasts for 20 rounds. Oh my god. Oh my god. Okay, so uh, I have thoughts on that. So one, yes, it is a 10 minute ritual where you would be doing nothing if you cast that in battle. Ideally, you'd cast it before battle. Comparing it to uh, summon creatures, 
or whatever it is, you only get a CR of two, and you get one. Yeah, but I mean, have you have you read ninth level spells? No, yeah. they I don't can be. Caster. They're all nonsense, broken, hilarious. So like, it, it's kind of it keeps going. This is like the exponential curve, but yeah, yeah ten is a lot. I think ten is too many. I think it wouldn't be unreasonable to be like you get three adult red dragons mm-hmm. yeah. as like again level twenty one. Uh, ten- yeah, we've been fighting ancient and not adult, and there is Ew. a difference. I oh, yeah. think one. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I thought. Like, you can make one adult red. Well, you can make an ancient white dragon <laughs> at ninth level spells with true polymorph. And, with true polymorph. I was gonna say, and think about like Thorn literally turned into a dragon yeah. in a battle with us. I think two or three, but it um, has to have like a five thousand gold diamond cost or something like that. True. True, true. You have to, like, have a dragon scale or something like that of, like, the red dragon, you know? But these, um... Like I said, these, like, because they're 3.5, like, you had to research, like, they, you had to do epic things to get these spells. Like, this one in particular, you had to pay 450,000 gold pieces. Jeez. It took nine days to study it. It costed you 18,000 of your XP, so oh you could God. possibly go down a level. Uh, and you needed 11 additional casters to contribute ninth level spell slots to this. Yeah, so that, there you it. go. That is balanced. <laughs> some of, like, the, uh, equivalent in 5e is, like, I've seen some, like, the really insane, like, Webby was showing me some of the 10th level spells, and some of them were, like, it costs 50,000 gold pieces, a phoenix's, you know, wing, um, the tears of an angel. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You have to like get these freaking crazy ass items before you're even able to use it. Yeah. So technically, those spells are before they've been homebrewed to fit into the world. But uh, I figured that were pretty. They were pretty cool to talk about. Yeah. Well, I don't want to battle somebody who can summon ten dragons. So long as they're on our side, it's fine. <laughs> as long as it's current. us summoning the ten dragons. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So do we have Rob roll the you, dice? I'll pick the next person. You only have to uh, avoid the dragons for 20 rounds, and then they finish. <laughs> True. <laughs> just, just, yeah, let me just casually avoid. Three minutes. <laughs> Make it 10 rounds. They only yeah, last three minutes. Oh my god. <laughs> Which you are fun. I'm glad just, you shared with us. Does Rob want to roll for the next one, or do you want me to roll? I have the die. You can roll. All right. That's Rob again. It's Rob again. Uh, no. Oh, that's I, you. I'm not allowed to. Okay. That's you. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, the homebrew I have is a homebrew that Webby Webby's actually come up with for my character. So when we reached uh, level 13, I decided to multiclass my character from ranger into druid, and once I reached Druid 2, I couldn't really pick a Druid circle between Homebrew or what already existed that kind of fit with my character since she was already established. So I talked with Webby, and he actually came up with something that I really, really like, and I think it's pretty cool. Uh, so we basically created this Homebrew um, specifically for my character, Rania. Um, it's called the Circle of the Hearth and Family because of her background with one of the characters. Um who was a follower of Hestia. So I don't know if if we talk about the whole thing or just the the big thing that I like, but we'll I guess we'll talk about it. Yeah. yeah, I would talk about all of it. So first you get a bonus cantrip. When you choose the circle at second level, you ch- learn the control flames cantrip. The cantrip doesn't count against the number of Drew cantrips you already know. And this goes into the whole Hestia's Hearth um, idea. Then the circle spells you get, your mystical connection to Hestia infuses you with the ability to cast certain spells. At third, fifth, seventh, and ninth levels, you gain access to circle spells. Um, those spells are, uh, at third is Continual Flame and Spiritual Weapon, which Spiritual Weapon is something that the character of Rose uses a lot. Um, fifth, you get Create Food and Water and Sending. Seventh, you get Death Ward, Guardian of Faith. 
And ninth, you get greater restoration and holy weapon. So nice. It's it definitely matches kind of like what like Rose's personality and Hestia and everything. What I really, really, really love about this circle is that you get access to these rights. So it's called the rights of home and family. At second level, when you select the circle, you gain two rights as listed below. Additionally, when you gain a druid level, you can choose one of the rights you know and replace it with another right that you could learn at that level. If any spells are gained through these rights, they count as druid spells and are the same spell DC as the spell tag modifiers. You choose two additional rights at 6th, 10th, and 14th level. All of these rights are named for the people who uh, Rania has traveled with and befriended. So she has <laughs> the right of Azathar, which is her hometown, uh, which means she no longer needs to sleep, can't be forced to sleep by any means. To gain the benefits of a long rest, you can spend four hours doing light activities, such as reading and keeping watch, which is great because she already tranced for four hours. Now she can just read through those four hours. <laughs> there's also a bunch of different ones. So there's the right of Rose, Gil, Alchina, Soren, Tyrus, Ivy, Teleron, Lys, and Ryder. Uh, and Spectre. Okay. So, yeah, we got rights for everybody. Right now, I've chosen the right of Azathar. And I'm double-checking the other one I took. Uh, somewhere in my long list of abilities. And I chose the right of Rose. Which is, first time you would drop to zero hit points as a result of taking damage, you use this right as a reaction. Instead, drop to one hit point. Uh, once you use this right, you cannot use it again until you complete a long rest. So, save you from, from some death, which is nice. But Always yeah, important. Every, everyone else's uh, related rights deals with something about them, which is kind of cool. I don't know if you want me to read the whole thing. I'm kind of out of breath. You're good. Um, yeah. It is very, like... It, you know, there's homebrew that's made, like, for other people, like, as, like, oh, here's something I'm offering to the community. And there's homebrew that's, like, this is for us. You know, like, this was exactly. literally handcrafted with, like, things that if you weren't playing our campaign, mean they would mean nothing to you. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's it's kind of, like, the the best thing about homebrew. So, if there's something that doesn't apply to your character, it's, that's your, kind of your ticket to just... Create whatever you want and make something that fits because it's all about telling a story. So I think that's why this homebrew in particular is like a special place in my heart because it's 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 just perfect for the campaign that we're in because it talks about all of the characters who are important to Rainia and Rainia is important to me. So it's just it's just a nice happy feeling. The first time Webby sent it to me and I was reading it, I was like, I was like, okay, this is nice. <laughs> I mean, half the characters on here are dead, so... <laughs> yeah, it's still nice. <laughs> What's the rest of the stuff? Oh, right. Um, there's also, at 6th level, you get the blessings of Hestia have infused themselves into your very blood. You become immune to poison and disease. In addition, the warmth of Hestia envelops you like a warm fireplace, granting you resistance to cold damage. So, resistances. Uh, and then at 10th level, the perfect hearth. Uh, you can create a perfect campfire during any short rest. A cr any creature that takes a short rest with you when you create this campfire will gain the following benefits at the end of the rest for one hour. They gain resistance to fire damage. The creature has temporary hit points equals to two times my druid level. And after using this feature, you must take a long rest before you do so again. And finally, at 14th level, there's no place like home. Uh, Hestia grants you the ability to get yourself and your family safe back home. You gain the ability to cast transport via plants up to three times per day without expending any spell slots. So that's the, the capstone of the circle, uh, which I probably will never get to, but I am trying. Unless <laughs> we epic level. survive. That's, that's my goal, anyway. True, survival is a big key to getting <laughs> yeah. those okay. things. Be level 27 for that. Only. I definitely chose to multi-class too late, but I realized that... Uh, it was thematic. I I, it was thematic, yeah, and I just, I, I, the longer I went through Ranger, I was like, hmm, this stuff's a little, a little low-powered for level 20. I don't, I don't think I want a bonus to favorite enemy to do an additional yeah. checks, notes, four damage. I... Bonus fantasy racism. <laughs> I am currently overwhelmed with my own ideas. 
but I am trying to come up with a way to create an alternate ranger. I know there's a bunch of them. I'm going to create an alternate ranger. Because I think that the favored enemy and the tracking mm-hmm. should just be one option. Yeah. Because not... I mean, I get it. It's the ranger. They're, you know, the forest and everything. But, like... There's <laughs> other things, like... Yeah, that's not the only way so to play a ranger. I, I want so that it can be, like, the ranger... The current one would be, like, one track, and then there would be, like... But as part of the base class, so it wouldn't impact the subclasses. Mm-hmm. Just, you pick a... path, basically. A sub... Mm-hmm. subclass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sub-subclass. Yeah. Yeah, I mean it's not it, like how um certain things like they're oh choose a fighting style as part of the fighters. It's like oh you mm. still it's not a subclass, but you still have to pick one. Like a ranger style. Yeah. 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 That is cool. That's a good point. Yeah. So uh, although I think you maybe I'm thinking of there, there's there is you do select a fighting style. Maybe yeah. I'm wrong. Oh yeah, see here. But I th- I think it's between like like archery or crossbow or something. I can't remember. I mean, there there is something that I have been tossing around. And I don't know how to balance. Okay. Well, this we're talking about homebrews. If okay. you wanna, I I don't know if it should cost a bonus action or if it, if it should cost your action and then take effect the following turn. Basically, you spend either your action or your bonus action to draw your bow and focus on a target. But then the attack that comes out of it is a guaranteed crit, and you get one a day. Okay. I don't know if that should be. It blows your whole turn. Yeah, it would. That would definitely yeah. have to be an action. But like you know, you focus on, and it, it would probably be part of something where you know you'd have to know something about the creature that you were fighting, so that you knew where to aim, something like that. So something like the. Favorite foe idea where it's like you, well, I don't know if this is how they've actually reflavored it because I haven't read it lately. But in my head, I was thinking you could re theme favorite enemy instead of being like, wow, I dislike this group of people, uh, to being like, you've just studied and know their weaknesses. I, I believe I fought them so actually, many times. I believe yeah. that the Tasha's features are worded in a way that you know about. The creatures you're fighting basically but, just... Well, actually, the Tasha's ones, it's you pick an enemy that you hit, and they're your favorite foe oh, for the battle. Oh, yeah. Instead of selecting it in It's the not, yeah, way. I really hate devils. You know, it's just that guy. I'm gonna kill well, that guy. I don't even know how it's worded, but... I don't know. Um, yeah. But, yeah, I guess... You could do it as, like, a spell attack. So instead of doing something like a bonus action that's Hunter's Mark, you cast that spell, and on your next turn, the spell effect yeah. happens. Because there's a couple ranger spells that do that. The The reason I was thinking about making it an action where you had to aim was basically, like, you have to... You can't... After you start doing that, you can't move. You can't do... You're, like, you're... Yeah. So I, I mean, I guess you can't move. It's a different thing. You would you, do your movement first. But there are a couple of ranger spells that I don't think I've actually used them yet. But there's the one where you essentially make a lightning attack, but mm-hmm. you use the entire action to basically say, okay, my next attack, whatever I hit, is going to be hit with lightning. Yeah. So it's it's like that, but you can still miss <laughs> the other one. Well, these ideas are just in the the embryo stage, so we'll, we'll see what comes of that. Uh, the embryo stage. Yeah, and the stable. I know I have weird words. I'm sorry. No, they're good words. It's good to hear them. All right. Ryan, do you want me to share? Do you want to go last? Or do you want me to go last? Uh, it's, uh, it's up to you. It's up to the okay. die. It's up to the die. It's Ryan. Oh, shit. Oh, there wow. you go. It actually, it actually came up me. Okay, so. Uh, this is a subclass that I made, I think, on Monday. I might have done it on Sunday. I don't I'm know. I'm an illusion. <laughs> this is the fighter subclass Citadel. Okay. So 
So a citadel is a master of defense and protection, sacrificing their own body and mind to prevent their companions from being hurt. Often wielding two shields and foregoing a more traditional weapon, citadels become skilled at using both shields to their advantage in battle. So at third level, immovable object. Beginning when you choose this archetype at third level, you may wield two shields at a time, one in either hand, as weapons that deal 1d8 bludgeoning damage on a hit, plus your proficiency bonus if you are proficient in shields. A magic shield with a plus one to AC also provides you a plus one to attack and damage roll, attacks made with that hand, and so on for shields with higher bonuses, but you only get the AC bonus from one of your shields. At seventh level, battering ram, Starting at 7th level, when you take the dash action on your turn while wielding two shields, and move more than 20 feet in a straight line, you can make an attack roll with your shield as part of your dash action. On a hit, a large or smaller creature is knocked prone, and your dash ends where you were when the attack was made. This feature does not count as an attack action for the purpose of the extra attack feature or similar. At 10th level, body armor. When an allied creature that you can see within 20 feet is hit by an attack, you can use your reaction to move up to your movement speed until you are within 5 feet, at which point the attack hits you instead, regardless of your AC. You can use this feature up to a number of times equal to your proficiency bonus and regain all you after completing a long run. That's interesting. At 15th level, Dampening Aegis. Starting at 15th level, you can use your body armor feature when your ally is hit by a spell that targets only them, but only if that spell would deal damage to them. You instead take the damage and any effects of the spell as if it had targeted you then. Uh, also at 15th level, once per short or long rest, you can add your constitution modifier. Choice. To what? To one saving throw of your choice. Gotcha. And then at 18th level, the spicy one. It's called Everlasting. At 18th level, you can push yourself well beyond the limits of your physical body. <laughs> when you are reduced to zero hit points, you can instead immediately roll as many of your hit dice as and gain temporary hit points equal to the result up to half of your maximum HP. But your regular hit points remain at zero. These temporary hit points last for one minute. If you use this feature and your temporary hit points are reduced to zero, while your regular hit points are still at zero, you immediately fall unconscious and fail three deaths. Oh my Jeez. god. Jeez. <laughs> After one minute, your you temporary hit points expire, and you immediately take four points of exhaustion as the adrenaline leaves your body and you become heavily fatigued. This feature cannot be used again while you are exhausted in Ooh. All right. So at first I was like, wow, that's overpowered. But then you basically die if nobody heals you. It's like a, it is like it's a wave of adrenaline. It's a last stand, like self-preservation kind of thing. Yeah, it's, it's like your yeah. last ditch effort. Yeah. So the whole purpose of the, the class is. Shield. You see somebody get hit, you run and block it. And it hits you instead. Like, okay. Uh, or the spell. You jump in front of the spell, basically. But only if it would deal damage. I love the theme of it. Yeah. I'd love to hear someone who's actually actively DM'd before's opinions on it, which is at least two people. Uh, te and Ryan, technically. Anyone but me. <laughs> I mean, what I got from Webby was, I like it. But I mean, I'd like to see what Rob said, I guess. Uh, I... <laughs> I mean, I would have to target that character with everything I have. It's huh? very, uh, it's 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 the kind of problem I'm having in Mistaven with Sean, where like I can't really do anything against him, so I kind of have to ignore him and try to hit other people. But then he'd be like, "Nah, you can't." <laughs> I'm I mean, here. I'm in your face. Because <laughs> they're playing a tank. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is fair. That's there were choices that I had to make. Like obviously, shield. So I limited it to that you can't get the AC bonus from both shields. Um, and then I figured, you know, how do you balance healing, basically healing to half 
and it's if you don't get healed, you die. <laughs> but you know, and I mean, four points of exhaustion, you become useless. Yeah, yeah. you do. <laughs> so that's guaranteed. Mm-hmm. Plus, did one exhaustion. of them like it would if something was hitting the other person? You were just you were just making it hit you instead, and it, and it yes. hit you it run didn't. over and it hits you instead. It it hits guaranteed and does the damage and any effects to you. Does that you? You just effect? as a fighter have a fuck ton of HP. It's so uh, you're as, just it's your reaction. You can move up to your movement speed until you're next to them. Okay. And you just guaranteed take the attack. And you only have the movement speed that you didn't use during your turn. I well, think that's how as react- a reaction. I don't know. Well, because you technically, well, if you don't get your reaction back, you wouldn't get your movement back because you can't move more than that within six seconds. True. It's not. Fi- I mean, not sure. so. every turn do you move. Also. True. Um, it was one other thing that I saw. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think the using the shields like as bludgeoning damage makes sense. It's not. I mean, there are other weapons that do plus eight, so that's not. You mean one d eight? One d eight. Sorry. Um, plus eight. One d eight. Same. <laughs> that's one d eight. So I mean, that, that's reasonable. Um, the only other thing I was kind of iffy on was the battering ram, where and it's easier because I'm actually reading it. Um. Where you you move twenty feet, but it's not your action. But conjure animals works the same way well, too. It it is the you're taking the dash action, so it is using your action. Oh, but it doesn't count as an attack, so you can't extra attack. You can't make a second attack. That makes way more sense. The, okay, yeah. so yeah, you're not getting like a bonus attack. You're using your action to dash and hitting mm-hmm. somebody. Yeah, and the 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 attack that you make at the end of the dash is part of the dash and not an attack. action. Okay. I but I understand what Rob is saying about having to balance around tanks and yes, that would be difficult. But hey, just don't be That's in the mess. True. <laughs> I love I I really do like the thematic of it of like yeah. being the person who's like I have a lot of HP. I'm going to jump in front of you. Like I have an HP just AC. Yeah. Well, cuz some of them were guaranteed hits. It's an le- uh, instance yeah. of yeah. the wizard's down to 4 HP. I have 90. I can take this hit. Like, yeah. Yeah. I was trying to make like a, a classic tank where they really don't do damage. They just absorb. But, you know. So yeah. Well, that's that's neato. pretty neat. You have a creative brain, friend. I wouldn't have been able to think of something like that. Thanks. Well, that leaves right. Apple. That leaves me. The thing that I thought you guys would enjoy. Specifically, I thought of Alexa when I was doing this. <laughs> I introduced to you the spite domain for clerics. <laughs> 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 Those who strike you shall feel the same pain you have felt sevenfold. The cost is no longer relevant. You'll break every bone in your body just to shed a little bit more of their blood. So... <laughs> Subclass features. Each domain has a list of spells. It's domain spells that you gain at the cleric level noted in the domain description. Once you gain a domain spell, you always have it prepared and it doesn't count against your number of spells you can prepare each day. So at first level, you get Armor of Gathis and Hellish Rebuke. At third, you get Silence and Spike Growth. Fifth, you get Counter Spell and Enemies Abound. Seventh, you get Blight and Phantasmal Killer. And ninth, you get Anti-Life Shell and Planar Binding. Um, when you choose this domain at level, at first level, you gain proficiency with heavy, heavy armor. Also, at first level, you get Infernal Brand. Your bloodlust is shaped into a vengeful curse. As a bonus action, you can mark a creature as the target of your wrath for one minute. For the duration, or until you use this feature again, the first time each turn your marked creature attacks or casts a spell on a creature other than yourself, it takes necrotic damage equal to 1d6 plus your cleric level. You can use this feature a number of times equal to your wisdom modifier, and you regain all expended uses when you finish a long rest. Baleful Malice. At second level, you can twist even the most trusted spells into deadly curses. When you see a creature within 60 feet cast a spell of fifth level or lower that restores hit points, you can expend your reaction and your channel divinity to corrupt it, forcing the caster to make a charisma save. 
A creature can fail this save willingly. Um, on a failed save, the spell's effect is canceled. The target takes necrotic damage equal to twice the hit points the spell would have restored. If the spell has multiple targets, you can choose which targets the effects are reversed for. So you can like have your healer purposefully heal enemies to then <laughs> give them <laughs> necrotic damage. Um Perpetual Cycle. At 6th level, your desire for revenge allows you to pers persevere through untold pain. Damage dealt to you by the target of your infernal brand is reduced by half your proficiency bonus rounded down. And when the target of your baleful curse causes you to make a concentration save, you gain a bonus to the save equal to your wisdom modifier. Um, starting at 8th level, you get potent spell casting. You can add your wisdom modifier to the damage you deal with any cleric cantrip. And finally, you get Endless Bloodshed at 17th level. You invoke powers beyond your control just to cause more destruction. You can cast Summon Greater Demon at will without any material components. It counts as a cleric spell for you, but doesn't count against the number of spells you can prepare each day. After you cast the spell in this way, you immediately lose concentration on the spell, and the demon automatically succeeds on its charisma saving throw to end your control over it, so then you just have a demon there. <laughs> well... <laughs> And that's the spite domain. <laughs> Jeez. Well, I just, I love the concept of it. <laughs> I approve just because I'm a spiteful person. So, I don't even care if it's balanced or not. That's awesome. I didn't even read it much beforehand. I was like, spite cleric, you got it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it kind of sounds like Vengeance Paladin, except for the thing where you unheal someone. <laughs> yeah. You know what? Fuck your healing. And I mean, I guess your reaction and your channel divinity is fair. True, true. I believe you Rob, send that to me. I got you. <laughs> Rob, what do you think? Uh, I mean, I think it's pretty fun, especially, <laughs> like, I, as a DM, like, I would love to have a cleric with that, so when you guys try to heal each other, it's like, nah. Instead, you're hurting each other. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun oh, to play God. with. <laughs> wait, wait. Does that say one creature who's being healed? It says, um, on a failed save, the spell's effect is canceled, and the target of the spell takes necrotic damage equal to twice P the spell restored. Uh huh. So, uh, I'm just gonna leave this here. Mass healing word. Yep. Uh huh. Because yep. it says if the spell has multiple targets, you can which targets the effect first for. It. <laughs> yeah. So um, all of them. <laughs> well, if you wanted to heal some of your party and then like if, uh, target some of the enemies, and they're like, "Oh, we're getting healed." Jk. <laughs> you Death. can also use this to outright kill someone who's being healed by the heal spell. <laughs> You're not wrong. <laughs> yes, Plus, yes. if they are dead and they are being healed, you are killing them. <laughs> like, you're just like, no. Oh, was that a heal spell? You take 70 damage instead. <laughs> oh, well, that is, that's spicy. That is. I, wanna I also play... have, go ahead. <laughs> I want to play a morally gray spite cleric. Yes. <laughs> you already were kind of talking about doing something like that, so when I oh, saw yeah. this, Absolutely. I was like, this. <laughs> this. It was like the you had the bonk hammer person, who just like... <laughs> yeah. Uh, who just... Uh, Bane of Chaotic Stupid Paladin. Yep. That's what I want. <laughs> Bane of Chaotic Stupid. <laughs> I still love it. Uh, Oh, but I found this little item. I'll read real quick because it's short. It's called the Spellbook for Her. Um, <laughs> this fluffy pink, unnecessarily gendered spellbook is adorned with cheap silver sequins that spell out the phrase, Choose Happy Every Day. It is magically bound to a flamingo pink quill topped oh with a pom-pom. While holding the book, you can speak its command word to make the quill teleport into your free hand. The book is enchanted with a simple illusion spell that makes it play life-affirming aphorisms in an upbeat, cheeky voice. When you finish preparing spells from the spell book, roll 1d10 on the life-affirming table to determine what it says. The sayings go as follow. Dance like nobody's watching. Oh my oh god. god. <laughs> you go, honey. 
This girl can. Is it wine o'clock already? <laughs> you're one you're one yummy mummy. Oh god. Did someone say chocolate? Manifesting positive vibes. Woke up like this. Every day you're sparkling. And then <laughs> number 10 is remember to purchase additional copies of the spell book for all of your empowered girlfriends. Choose happy every day. <laughs> Tears needs to get this book. And it, <laughs> and it just plays the, is it one o'clock already? Every it time it doesn't do anything else. <laughs> it's like somebody oh. went into Claire's and looked at all of the things on all of the books and was like, I'm going to make this a spell book. <laughs> oh my god. I think it's a top tier item. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> oh That's the glory of homebrew is you can just you can just have shit like that. <laughs> oh my god. Uh. Oh boy. Well my cheeks hurt. <laughs> uh, I have one more I can read if we need to kill some more time. It's also a short one. Sure. Sure. This is the goblet goblet. The first part is goblet as in like a tiny goblin, and then the second part is goblet. <laughs> it starts off with, you know, it's kind of messed up how a goblet is a cup and not a tiny goblin. Well, except the goblet goblet is a goblet with a handle resembling the body of a tiny goblin. Its head is the cup. It's like the head of the cup. Um, if you speak the command word while the goblet is filled with liquid, the handle becomes a creature, <laughs> taking one round to drink and free itself from the cup. <laughs> the creature is friendly towards you and your companions. It obeys your spoken commands, if it understands them. If issued no commands, it will stay close to you or the area it was left in, but will act on its own accord. Each goblet goblet has its own personality, and it will stay animate for a duration based on how how much it likes the liquid provided at time of animation. It can become a goblet for up to one minute if the liquid provided is non-potable, one hour if it dislikes the liquid, eight hours towards the liquid, and 16 if it likes the liquid. At the end of the duration, the goblet will form a new cup around its head and cannot be used again for eight hours. Well, that's a little fun item. How big is this goblin goblet? Here, I'll just, I'll share it in here. It's however big a normal cup is, but... Reminds me of the hippopotamus. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why is Matilda doing suck marks in the house? Hold on, I'll be back. Yeah, you're good. Well, that's a neat little item. Yeah, I just thought it was cute. I just, the goblet goblet is what really got me, honestly. That's adorable. Oh. I wonder what other, what other cute items we have in homebrew, homebrew land. <laughs> There's so many cute ones out there, honestly. If you could homebrew any item, what would you start with? Like, what's your starting point? Hmm. Okay, well, I mean, Spectre's Cloak is a homebrew, and I made it myself. Oh, what is so, it? So I was wanting to enchant her cloak, and I was like, okay, here's my idea for it, because I cannot find anything that I think is, like, fits what I'm interested in. It's kind of Assassin's creed E, mm -hmm. so she gets, like, a bonus to hide. She, like, blends into the crowd. People have, um, they have disadvantage if they're trying to, like, remember information about her. And if she is hidden, she can teleport up to 60 feet um, from the spot that she's hidden in. Interesting. Yeah. I had talked it out with Webby. I was like, man, here's, I had listed some things that I was like, these seem like normal things. And I was like, but here's what I'm actually interested in. <laughs> so I guess I kind of have made that, you know? Is it like considered a legendary item? I don't know. I don't know if he gave me a, a like a, right. Hmm. God, it's been okay. so long ago that we enchanted that. I'm <laughs> sure. Do you have any ideas? Or Ryan, if you do, do you have anything that you've like already made? <laughs> Uh, I have an item that I started uh -huh. creating. Um, <gasps> Renny just hasn't picked it up from the shop yet. Um, she wanted to make two new short swords because she still has the short swords that she started the game with. Uh -huh. And basically, I, I do too much piercing damage and I needed to um, come up with another option um, uh -huh. for damage. So I decided to get scimitars for slashing damage. But I wanted it to be kind of like Almost dragon huntery, 
um, mm-hmm. just because of Rainia's personal history. So after yeah. we took down the ancient white dragon and I harvested teeth from it, I wanted to create a sword around that where I had a pair of scimitars that the pommels could be switched out for different dragon's teeth. And depending on the teeth of the dragon that you put in the scimitars, it would change the output damage type or the secondary output damage type. So they're normal plus, well, I I wouldn't say they're normal, but they're plus two scimitars because at this point we're level 14. Um, But they do an additional 2d8 of whatever type of damage that dragon did. It's not a, a breath attack or anything. It's just like cold damage, for example. What I like about them is anytime Rainia kind of, I guess, takes out another dragon, I can harvest more teeth and do one of each if I wanted to. So I could do one cold, one fire, and just kind of mix and match to kind of deal with type advantages. I could, I don't know if we determined if we switch out the pommel, like if it just took a couple minutes or an action or something. Uh, or if I could just do it in the morning and that would be my only time. I don't know if we discussed that, but... I that's wonder... The, that's could you thing. just ask Chandra for a tooth? <laughs> I don't know. Be like, hey, you got well, a tooth to spare? That's not really the question. The question is, would she give it to you? How? I'm better Please? friends, but I don't, I don't know if I would ask her for it because the... the the it's kind of like a trophy for Rania where it's more like for mm. show like yeah I did this gotcha. just to kind of like intimidate almost um so she wouldn't want to take a tooth from a dragon that she kill or mm-hmm. one who gave one up willingly um so like she wouldn't she could theoretically just go to a shop and yeah um but that's not her style that's fair uh what about you Ryan any any Items you've homebrewed and welcome back, Rob. Any items I've homebrewed? Yeah. Why? There sure is some items I've homebrewed. <laughs> uh, Why, gee golly, yeah, there is. I mean, Simon has made a couple items. Oh, yeah, Simon. It's a lot of items. Dude, the um, thing he made for Pebbles, that's still up there for me. I actually, why don't I have this in my in my notes? You took um, notes? It, I have <laughs> Simon Magic Crafts. Um, so... Simon made a a stone for pebbles uh, that when he rubs it, uh, he has to roll a d6, I believe, or a d8, and it immediately puts him to sleep for that number of hours, right where he is. Uh, and during his sleep, he can talk to people that he believes to be dead, uh, but they can only answer him in a way that he knows that they would answer. So they can't give him any new information or anything like that, but he can get what he can just have conversations with the party members that he believes have died. Words of affirmation. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Simon has also made for Lotus a pouch of dust called Home is Where the Hearth Is. And when you throw a pinch of the dust into fire, you can see out of a fire that you are familiar with. Uh, So Lotus used it to check on their home. They haven't seen in eight years. Well, you know, just little things. Trying not to create anything broken. Just little flavor things here and there. Did you make RP items? I I did make disguise self smoke bombs. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> which is diamonds super so smoke funny. Ah, uh, it's just a round iron ball with a paw print on it. All right, Rob. Favorite homebrew items you've created? Okay, I'm gonna stick with the ones that I have created as a player because I have a lot that I've created as a DM. <laughs> uh, uh, so the items I've created as writer. Uh, I made a couple. Uh, Ryder had it, the half elf. The type of half elf I chose had innate spell casting for a couple of kinds of spells, but instead I turned those into his, into a lens item that he could look through lenses to see and use them that way instead. Uh, <clears throat> that were uh, detect magic, detect poison and disease, and detect invisibility, based yeah. on d- what the the different gems the lenses are made of. 
I love um, those lenses. I think they're so cool. <laughs> uh, and then I made a quill of Speak With Dead, where the dead can write instead of talking, uh, which doesn't cost a spell because it's an item. Uh, it's a raven feather with tiny little fairy writing. Oh, uh, yeah, that one took you forever to like get the little writing on it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, I created a glass sphere, which is called Writer's Radial Reducer which reduces blasts and bursts by 20 feet to a minimum of 20 or 15 or something like that. I don't remember. Or 10. I think it's 10 is the, the minimum. Uh, but anything that he's caught in, he can use his reaction to reduce like a dragon's breath attack or fireball by 20 feet. Uh, so, so potentially it doesn't catch everyone or sometimes it even doesn't catch him, as was the case with the dragon breath. Uh, <clears throat> and then... Well, I'm currently working on one, which I don't want to. But it has to do with Ivar's horn and Ivar's blood. <laughs> ah, no spoilers. Yeah. No spoilers. <laughs> hmm. Well, that was fun. I like homebrew stuff. Yeah. The real question is, are we actually going to all make a homebrew thing to talk about in a future SU episode? I mean... I'm I'll down. have to subscribe and find out. Not sure. <laughs> yep. Yeah, you'll have to listen on all major streaming platforms. <laughs> <laughs> Turn on the notifications. I mean, we we could agree to to do that. We'll make it happen. Why not? Maybe, maybe on board to participate. All right. Uh, so, what's the premise of that? Since we're talking about it, so let the listeners know what they can expect sometime in the near future. I guess we should collectively pick a class. And then oh, we'll yeah. Each up, we'll each come up with one subclass for that class specifically. And then we'll just gently workshop. Presented in a PowerPoint. We don't no. have to do a PowerPoint. <laughs> we could also kind of rank them like we have in other episodes where we've gone through the subclasses and been like, this is CS for OP or D for disgusting. Yeah, 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 exactly. So we, yeah, we could do a, a rating subclasses homebrew edition. I yeah. definitely think we should have visual aids on this audio podcast. So oh, definitely. I agree. PowerPoints, yes. Left to right. Even just an image. Let me uh, let me make a little a little roulette wheel here. Are yeah, we, we going to pick the class now? Yeah, shouldn't we? I don't know. Well, Is that gonna be surprise? Like, yeah, maybe, maybe we we need to discuss it as a group and see what what class we all feel comfortable with. And, or we can r- yeah. roulette wheel and just tell people we lied. <laughs> we roulette wheel and we don't reveal the results. We all go ooh. <laughs> <laughs> so ooh, yeah. that's what it is. <laughs> Yeah, roulette wheel and type it in the chat, but if we change our minds, we won't stick with it. So that's why we can be like, ooh. We're giving ooh. away our secrets! <laughs> oh, right, sorry. Don't, you know, I mean, uh, we're, we're you unprofessional guys... here, don't, don't you remember? <laughs> <laughs> so I guess you'll have to find out next time. <laughs> oh. Alright, alright, let's, let's see. Do we want to narrow it down? Oh, are those all of them? Hold on, no. Uh, I'm going to not add Blood Hunter. That's fair. Yeah. Oh, wait. I just deleted Ranger. I mean, I, I would be Ranger off as well, just because, like we said when we were discussing it, what else are you going to do for Artificer? True. All yeah. right. I have, I have everything but I have everything but Artificer and uh, Blood Hunter. Wheel is spinning. Did it land on that one anyway? No, nope, it landed on this. All right. Yeah. Wow. I've already done one of those. Yeah. <laughs> that certainly uh, is a class that exists in D and D. So the 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 rules, I guess, if we agree, is that you have to make something new. Okay. Uh, so we have actually, to I already made two of those, and I can't use either of them now. Just. <laughs> We're going to make something new. You can choose for it to be uh, serious or funny or whatever, I guess. Okay, now, serious question for me, because I'm bad at this. What if I create something that already exists and I just did not know that it already Then we'll discuss what's different, because you, it can't be exactly the same. Sure. You know, there's no way that you would create something verbatim, and we'll see what your brain came up with versus what already exists. All right. 
That's fair. Yeah, yeah. So maybe sometime in the future you'll hear that episode. Yes. But you won't find out if you don't stick around, so <laughs> guess you gotta subscribe. <laughs> like my werewolf character, like and subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> Puns are only allowed when Webby. <laughs> uh, we still have to say fuck Booster Gold. Yeah, no, you I did don't. It. Uh, so I did it. <laughs> I Science corner. Much yet. <laughs> Science corner for this week. Uh, yes. We finally have an image of our own black hole. Uh, we Ooh. had taken an image of a, a distant one, but now they have confirmed there is a black hole at the center of the Milky Way, and they have a picture of it. So that's pretty. That's so I love that. I, when I found out about that, I was like, "Yes." <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's called Sagittarius A, in case you didn't know. Uh, but yeah, the that's the reason so why Sagittarius it, of it. <laughs> it looks like a glowing, blurry donut. <laughs> but the reason oh for that God. is because uh, they have to use several telescopes to uh, to record it, uh, the image, and the thing, the matter that it's consuming swirls around it so fast is what caused this, the blurry image. So, that's why it, they can't do any better unless you could get closer, which is going to be a long, long time from now. I gotta put that telescope in sports mode. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh yeah, so that's Science Corner. Does anybody have life advice since Devin is not here this week? I have life advice. Alright, life advice with Ryan. Don't touch a hot exhaust pipe. Okay. Solid life advice, honestly. (laughs) Speaking from experience. (laughs) All right. Mm. (laughs) Oh, here's some good life advice. If you're going to mail your tax documents off, make sure you sign them first. (laughs) 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 So they don't send it back to you asking for a signature. (laughs) Oh, boy. (laughs) You know what? Well, we'll we'll just go around. I got life advice. Don't break your arm. Don't do it. (laughs) Yeah. You Just try not to. to stop. <laughs> the pain. Uh, All right. If you want to look me up, I'm Apple Schloss 21 on Twitter. I was getting there. No, I'm so, saying it anyways. Well, fine, whatever. So, uh, where can <laughs> they find you, Ryan, since Apple already skipped it? <laughs> uh, I do know that. <laughs> I'm a ghost in the wind, but, uh,. Ghost. I guess I have a Twitter at Crimtastic. Thank you. And Lex? Uh, Ursula's Revenge spelled R-V-N-G-E at Twitter and Instagram. And you can follow me on Twitter at Confessor underscore X on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Confessor X. And as always, you can follow Webby if you'd like. Uh, Jack's Forest Walker, all one word. Uh, send us in any questions. We like getting questions. We like giving advice. Uh, if you want a topic for Science Corner, send it to me. We'll do whatever. We're we're whores like that. That's <laughs> oh my uh, God. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you for joining us. And as always, fuck Booster Gold. Bye. 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 We gotta talk over now. Play us out, Craig. Play us out, Craig. I'm simply unprofessional.